Anyway, should we uh, start the the roast, the Comedy Central roast of the Kino Corner? Sure. <laughs> Are you gone? My we roast have, is ruined. Do we have Isaac join the, the call? or No. Or not? Uh, Isaac okay. Mahaffey? I don't know if he wants to join this call. I mean, you didn't ask him. You probably should have. Oh, well. No, you should not have the director of a film there when you're reviewing his movie. That's fucking cringe and stupid. I guess we should have told that to of a ball. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I had a lot of criticisms of that film that I did not mention because Uva Ball was there, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I had criticism of him that I didn't mention. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. We should have him back on, but he... Yeah, I'll get him and the guy from CI Ape, and we can have a real insider discussion <laughs> on Hollywood. <laughs> yep. All right, uh, is this also a crossover with movies podcast or is this an is it Kino exclusive? Do you oh, even count this right. as a film? Um, shit. Yeah, we yes, did do this. It's, as it's, got, it's got an IMDb and everything. <laughs> uh, if we're going to do this as a crossover, we'd have to use Zoom. I don't have any of the uh, the shit set up on this laptop. Oh, uh, well, I'm out of town. Uh, if you want, uh -oh. I could just send you this audio or you can just uh, not bother. When, I mean, yeah, it's no, no, really no. up to uh, you. <laughs> Send me the audio, and depending on like if if my mic or something sounds good enough, then we'll 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 run with it. Okay, that should sound fine. Uh, yeah, I mean it sounds like a Discord call, which is fine for our show. Uh, I'm, I'm using a, a Blue Yeti today instead of my <clears throat> uh -oh. XLR whatever mic, so I don't know. I see. Well, I'll just introduce oh. it, and we can be vague enough. <laughs> but anyway, okay, that sounds good. Hey everybody, welcome back to Is It Kino, a very special crossover episode event. We've got two international pairs of movie review podcasting best friends uniting together like the Avengers to take on a Thanos level threat. That of course being the Kino Corners student film. I am Simeon Jimmy, joined as always by Florian Himsel. Hey guys, I, I love this movie and I'm, I'm glad that we, we finally get to see the, 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 the history of this great friend of ours. Can't wait to talk the about this The humble beginnings. <laughs> <laughs> and from the Movies Podcast here on YouTube and uh, appearing in back-to-back -back episode to visit Kino, we have Low Res Wonder Bread. Yes, it's so good to be back. I'm very like the Russell Hans of this podcast. All my episodes are always back-to-back. Um, and I'm you're going to be the runner-up both about... times. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, I'm glad we're talking about the the evolution here of YouTube movies once again. It's been a while since we talked about anyone's efforts in that medium. Yeah, we did uh, Ralph the Movie Maker's movie, and what was the other one? I forgot. We did Space Cop as well. Oh, yeah. Um, and speaking of cops, your partner in crime, joining us, I believe, for the first time ever, Mr. Hans Christian Anderson. Hello. Yeah, I think I think the only uh, other show thing with you guys was when we did uh, uh, Space, Space Cop. Cop. Yeah, but this yeah. is the first time you and Space Florian and are Robert. uniting together, so it's a really monumental moment. It's a yeah, multicultural. How are you doing? <laughs> Wait, are you not German? Pretty good. I, as, I, as I didn't know that. Uh, I, I didn't know that uh, that the director was your guys' friend. You didn't? I, I, I wasn't oh. aware of this. Oh, no. God. <laughs> uh, How else would we have heard about not, this not very movie? familiar. Not very familiar with Isaac Maha Mahaffey? Well, surely Mah I don't know how to he's been on your show before, I believe, many times, right? I know Kino. I don't know an Isaac. I don't oh, know okay. Either. <laughs> We're doing like a Bruce Wayne thing right now, I guess. Uh, well, I guess so. let's establish th this because... I think I might be uh, getting at what you're alluding to here. So I want to discuss a certain philosophy of mine, and that is the separation of art from the artist. Okay, right. folks? So I don't care who made this movie. I'm going to discuss it for what it is, regardless of the names and the credits. Uh, is that fair? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I think I think it's fair. I think it's going to be pretty brutal, but it's going to be fair. <laughs> I mean, surely nobody would would like. We we have our integrity here, and we got to review it as it is. You know, unrelated right. to who made it. And I'm I'm just so glad to to see that, 
like this director has really made his best work with his first work you know this is hmm. clearly the best he's ever made a, a great movie about very relatable he characters. hit his peak you're saying that he can do no better work than this <laughs> okay I'm, I'm i'm joking i just want him to hear this and 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 i want him to experience the the, <laughs> the, the you want the him to experience what I well, want him to experience me defending his movie, okay? Uh, well, Florian, I, I know he, he would have loved that, okay? But Well, Florian, let me I, ask you, because if anything, I want to be consistent in how I criticize the artwork of my friends. So would you say, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, my review of the Ball Frog video game, how brutal and honest do you think I was? Uh, yeah, you were pretty brutal and honest. Okay, yeah. so, so this will be fair for me to give, you know... Maybe a minor critique to the Mr. Kino Corners film. Well, to be fair, you are like a huge really asshole. Bad at, really bad at games, so your your oh. game well, review doesn't really hold up that well. You probably should have, like, if you're a good reviewer, you probably should have played the game more and like <laughs> gotten to the end of it before you review it. But okay, I, I'll allow it. All right. Well, hey, at, at the very least, I have now seen this film in its entirety twice. <laughs> uh, has anybody oh, yeah. beaten my record on this panel? I have one and a half to my name. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Always good to have a half. Now, Hans, this is your third time through, I believe. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I got distracted because I was I was going to the letterbox page and then I realized the director is called Peter Mahaffey. So mm. I'm even more confused as to who the director of this film is. I'm glad I didn't know before I watched it so I didn't impair my opinion of it. Yeah, I uh, wonder why he didn't want his real name on this fine piece of work. I was, I was just going to say, is this like an Alan Smithy thing where, you know, David Lynch and some other directors get so embarrassed of the work, you know, maybe there was a producer who just meddled in the affairs of this Isaac Mahaffey. Well, the like, producers, no, 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 if you paid Peter. close attention, also share the surname <laughs> Mahaffey, so I assume it was his mother and father. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and he, he written and directed it, you know? Yeah. It's really, it's really all him. This was the director's cut. Okay, so I... This I, is I, interesting. I, I obviously didn't love it, okay, but I, I think I, I think the characters are interesting enough. All right? I, I probably probably I'm the, the the one who hates it the least. I just hate the fucking audio so goddamn much. Why yeah. are they always crickets? Why is it always the wrong volume? It's so bad. You couldn't have recorded it properly. It's like he put uh, he... Oh, go ahead, Hans. Oh. Was he recording the audience where he got all those crickets from? <laughs> <laughs> it gave me the impression. It reminded me of in high school when we would do a stage play and that we only had four like little uh, lavalier microphones. So only the four main characters would get one. So everybody else would have to just scream if they wanted the audience to hear them. I think Kino might have just given his main character as a microphone and anybody else. Like if you're the Asian kid, you're not on a mic. We can't hear a single <laughs> word you're saying the whole film. It's only like I mean, the four main people. That doesn't even work. Like even in scene where there's, the, where there's like two characters, then you can't hear one of them. Like you, the, he, he would have been. Yeah, I, I don't that know what he was around. thinking. Only miking one character in the scene. You're right. <laughs> it is crazy and infuriating to watch. Yeah, it, it, he does so much wrong in this. It's amazing. <laughs> and like, I mean, when you go back to your old work, you see like all of the obvious mistakes you've made. And if I had written a, a movie at that time, it might have been the worst thing ever, you know? But yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's just good to see like all the things that you can learn from when making such an old thing. It's, it's good that, that he made it because... Like, not making it, he wouldn't have learned anything, but he, I'm sure he learned a lot from making it. I, I think it's, it's, you know, it's I think good he learned, I think he learned, I think he learned uh, that this was a waste of $70,000. Oh. Yes, you heard it. <laughs> no. 70, $70,000 to shoot on film for this movie. Oh, man. Who, 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 who paid he, for that? He paid for it. Somebody the with the surname Mahaffey. Wow. See, the, yeah, my, okay. I, my favorite, my favorite okay, thing that, about Flo uh, that, Florian's positive review is that he's, he's saying nothing positive about the movie. It's just about things. <laughs> well, he maybe said he it was a good learn. learning experience. <laughs> no, is at it, first it's about I, the experience. Hey, no, no, the, the, where, where I was trollingly saying it was good, I said that the characters were good, which is obviously very important in the movie. But but then I downgraded them to be 
like interesting, okay? Merely interesting. <laughs> My favorite character is the obvious stand-in for Kino Corner himself, and it's like the most metrosexual character in the film. <laughs> He's wearing his pink polo shirt the whole time. Uh, I like that guy. I'm disappointed he didn't play it himself. I mean, he couldn't <laughs> have made the movie any worse if he had been the, the main character as well. What? <laughs> it would have been better. You know, I'm very surprised. It. Yeah, I, I was my favorite. That he managed the... to get uh, David Hogg to play the lead in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is before yeah. that the big incident, so he wasn't as big of a name yet. Yeah, and, and right. the the great YouTube star BG Kumbi, you know, it's great he got him True. in there too. That is the best part is when Kumbi shows up to improvise in a closet. But uh, Hans, what <laughs> were you saying? Was he retroactively was BG Kumbi retroactively thrown into this movie because? I know that Kino said he shot this at what, 23, 24 years old? And how old is he now, 28? Yeah. Yeah, I think the Cumbie stuff was probably the final thing shot for the uh, movie. Really? I would say so, yeah. I mean, they must have had that back in the day. Okay, so anyways, I I don't think he was friends with BG Cumbie when he was filming the principal photography. Okay, so, so I gotta really quickly here like really expose fucking Kino as as a huge fraud here. Yikes. Because, like, <laughs> maybe we like, should have let him on to defend himself, Jesus. but yeah, yeah, maybe. Like every time <laughs> he, he talks about money and stuff, he's he's like, yeah, I, I I built my own stuff, you know. I I I didn't have rich parents. They didn't they didn't give me like tons of money. And then apparently he's got the money to pay for seventy thousand worth of of filming a movie his like, father gave him a small loan of a million dollars florian you wouldn't understand yeah you you're not you're not a poor person you 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 have privilege up the ass okay this is a, a silver spoon that people could only dream of all right uh, did you get it the impression is... from this film that everybody involved is suffering from their privilege and really that's the closest thing to a problem that they face in the entire movie uh, not necessarily. I mean, they, hmm. they, they're fairly middle class, but like he must be pretty upper class if, if like his student project costs seventy thousand dollars. Like you must have money to burn at that point, mm-hmm. don't you think? Uh, well, can you... Do, you, do you think that the the shooting of this on film did add anything to it uh, as far as? Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, no. I'll be honest here. Um, it is student film quality you have like white walls you have like poorly lit exterior dark shots and bad acting um but here's the thing you know uh when you're shooting a ten thousand dollar student film with a dslr you'll get uh banding effects you'll get uh pixel noise you'll get all this and that this doesn't have that some of these shots look um well the composition aside right they look kind of i think charming because of the film grain here now would i spend seventy thousand dollars for that no i would not um i certainly would not i don't think there's very few things i'd spend seventy thousand dollars on uh like this especially would not be it like this is i think it's probably even counterproductive because he would have surely made more reshoots if if the the film wasn't so goddamn expensive so no i think I think it was a mistake to to do that. Well, Lorez, um, speaking of Kino Corner potentially being fraudulent in everything that he says to us, I might be misquoting him, but can you correct me here? He told me, because I I brought this up to him, I said, isn't that kind of a waste of money just to do it on film? That seems kind of pretentious and stupid. Like, I I said this to him. (laughs) And he said that filming it with a different camera would have cost the same amount of money anyway, so it doesn't actually matter. Now, is he full of shit? No, that's completely wrong. I don't I don't know what the hell he's talking about. You can buy a, like a- He's listen, coping and the, seething the at camera, that point. <laughs> he's looking the, at his bank camera, account and he's coping. <laughs> the camera that, that I used to shoot Mass State Lottery, right? Which I think, and I'm not sucking my own dick here, is professional looks professional, was a $2,500 camera. Um, You get a digital camera, especially if you're shooting at that level, you don't put yourself in severe debt or like borrow people's money (laughs) to make your first film. Now, I think, look, I'll I'll be honest with you, Kino's start here, if he's 24 years old and he did this full feature film, that's kind of impressive, Um, even if the movie's not. You know, so there's something to be said about doing that and having the initiative and holding the production and making something that has like a very clear narrative because that's not always easy. Um, but 
going about it in that manner, I think, was a big mistake. Yeah, I, I think if, if, if they make if, movies if on iPhones now, there's really no excuse exactly. for. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, exactly what I was going to say. You can just get an iPhone and not spend $70,000 on, on a movie where you're going to shoot mids and close-ups, and that's well, it. Uh, when you're going to shoot a bunch of people having conversations that don't really do anything, and who cares about what they're saying, because it looks like the director doesn't even care about what they're saying, then why would you spend $70,000 on film? I mean, he probably cared. It's just that it didn't pick up on the mic. I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> like, the passion was there. It just wasn't recorded. But it, The like, problem it, was he invested 70 grand in the film, but only a dollar in the mic microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it looked good, at least. The iPhone would give you a better audio, too. Yes. Just saying. Yeah, I, I don't I don't personally appreciate, like, the film, of the, the look of film, and I don't like the film grain. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it it like okay, it looks it looks old. All right, that's a, a look that we, that he wanted, I guess. I disagree with that look. I, I think that everyone who who shoots on film when digital is available is just a hack. Okay, <laughs> you watch you, you watch fucking Walking Dead. Didn't add to it. Okay, it looks like shit. Please use digital. <laughs> 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 but that's just me, and I I I will not hold it against it okay it's a visual choice that i disagree with and i i do not judge movies based on on that okay because i think that would be wrong it would be surface level well should we you dive know? into the the characters and story then uh florian because that's uh, yeah, what, what you started yes. with in terms of your praise you like the characters um i vehemently disagree but i would like to hear yep. you say uh, what you like about them oh well well, m most of all, I, I think that there are too many characters, and it, it's 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 a mess, really. I, I just like the. <laughs> I like. I the, asked the for the praise. <laughs> I, I'm coming. <laughs> Instead of like, doing like a, a nice sandwich, like a compliment sandwich, you're doing a shit sandwich where you start with the mean thing and then you say something <laughs> nice, and then you get. I assume I'm going to end it with more mean things. I don't think I have a, an ending mean thing. Okay, so. So basically, I just relate to the characters because I, I think it's it's it captures the the experience of like of having the last year of your of, of your high school experience or whatever it is. I don't. I mean, yeah, I guess I feel related. You know, people people had big plans and other people had had just no no ambition at all, and and they were all just hanging out because. Now, like the time for studying is over, and now it's just time to, 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 to play, to waste time, really. So, I, I feel like thematically it works, and 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 they are believable students. I think they are not very. Okay, I guess I am adding a little piece of shit at the end. <laughs> I, I guess it's hard I guess to resist. Not, I guess that they are not specifically telling a, a, a particularly worthwhile story. Some of some parts of it were pretty good, and they had a. A satisfying ending, you know. I like when the oh, satisfying. I mean, like for for the characters themselves. Well, maybe not. I, I guess the thing right before the ending, like when the guy told off his his, his stupid drug dealing brother. I, I felt that was a, a really satisfying scene. Okay, like fuck that guy. <laughs> you mean the guy that I, didn't I like change? The the guy that didn't change at all throughout the whole movie just called out his brother who also didn't change throughout the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, he had no motivation for his character change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he tried I to change, but, but then he still went home with him, you know? <laughs> yeah, he, he did. Yeah. Uh, I liked it when the uh, the gay band guy tried to beat up every woman in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh... So, 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 do you? Is there? Is there like a story? I thought it was just it, what it felt like a bunch of vignettes of just here's a group of friends that have hung out with each other maybe once or twice, so they're very uncomfortable talking to each other, saying things that that you would think would be comfortable between friends, but it seems like they've only spoken a couple of times before, so it's just awkward coming out of their mouth, and like there's zero chemistry between anyone. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. so then you have characters like 
I, and I don't know if this is the the insert of the director in it, but there's a guy that has the same energy as that Tarantino clip where he talks about Top Gun, but he's talking about the Crusades, and I'm supposed to care about this guy that just showed up and then disappears, <laughs> and then well, he, he shows up maybe later. for like five minutes later to give another monologue, uh, and completely yes, out of place. And that scene you're talking yeah. about, I think, would be a, a good dissection of the entire film, just to show people this scene. I guess in the ice cream parlor where. Uh, all three different groups of main characters are in at their own table talking and yeah we have this random guy who's going on this big long rant about the crusades and it's juxtaposed like in between his rant we're cutting to the other main character who i guess is talking about wanting to go to a party or just like some really lame boring teenager crap so i think the director what is he trying to to inform us about with this scene with the juxtaposition of this great epic narrative of history with the mundanity of uh the, the everyday teenage life i mean i don't know what you mean by mun mundanity because there is that line where uh the the little guy asks about the coffee flavors they have and his friend is like well they don't have curry you know because curry flavored coffee is like a yeah, yeah, there the, are the joke. A, Asian people brown. get shit on multiple times in the movie, and like just random characters will be racist against them. Like the the bouncer will be dropping some Asian jokes yeah. for no reason at the bar. <laughs> the bouncer that talks about what is it, uh, hypnotism, and and how he's really into. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't even. Yeah. I we need even about twelve <laughs> minutes of teenagers talking about doing uh, psychedelic drugs and mushrooms and stuff. You know, oh, yeah. it's really deep and, and, and how. Well, the bouncer you know, is the, a teenager in this. Oh, yeah, he's talking to like, a teenager. Yeah. The, the weed brownie recipe that, that uh, somehow <laughs> doesn't work, and then the other guy just takes a bite and he's well, like, Now, oh, you well, say but. somehow doesn't work. Uh, do you guys understand the, the issue with his pot brownies here? Yeah, he just put the, the buds in without <laughs> yeah. cooking them or anything. He just ripped up the weed and put it on a fucking brownie and cooked it. <laughs> like, this character is a complete fucking dumbass. No, I, I, do, I don't think he cooked it. I think he I, just I think he did. the brownies. I think he, he said... No, he said he bought brownies and he bought weed. Like, so he combined them after they were already cooked. Uh, I thought he put it in the oven and cooked it like that. To bake no, it into the brownie. <laughs> Yeah, it was no, just a brownie just, with a bud shoved in the middle of it. it fucking yeah. disgusting. It, <laughs> yeah. it wouldn't do anything for you other than make you gag. Yeah, just insane. <laughs> the worst kind it of just, character it, in this. Yeah. It felt like he was trying to do like Dazed and Confused, but you know how in Dazed and Confused there's druggies and then there's different like factions of teenagers from the time. But here it's like... Oh, I heard this is how people talk when they drink. Oh, I heard that when you do this drug, uh, you would act this way. Oh, but you don't it, think that the straight it, edge writer and director of the film had uh, classic experience yeah. himself, you know, out in the field with these types of people, smoking and drinking with yeah. them? Yeah, you On just take a little tiny... Note, yeah. I did feel Almost. the same way when the guy was breaking up with his girlfriend right as high school was ending, like... Yeah, you know, I'm uh, I'm going to a different college. I didn't tell you, and uh, you know, they they have like this very sterile robotic conversation, like a couple would never have. Like these are people who just met each other, and that's how they. Oh, sound. dude, come on! You guys saying these these guys don't have chemistry? I I really think that you're overestimating how much social prowess teenagers have. I I believe this. Okay, I think this is a good representation of of how how teenagers would interact with each other but i guess i, I might be too autistic to know better <laughs> what what do you think monkey well if if you as an autistic man think that it's an accurate way for teenagers to interact uh, that might say a lot more about again the filmmakers than anything else <laughs> no i mean like it's always hard for me to judge anything but yeah i mean I mean, I, I think that you're expecting too much, like, social skill from teenagers. Well, I think the problem is every... I mean, no offense, but every actor is terrible, so they're not going to have chemistry no matter what, because they just are not good. Like, he, I think he grabbed his actual fucking teachers to play the teachers. Uh, it's just <laughs> like when I was 12 and put my mom in a video, and suddenly she, like, learnt, forgot how to speak and becomes, like, robotic in her voice, you know? Like, these people are not actors... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that definitely happens. Well, hold on now. That's not entirely true. He did get, what was it, Jeremy London or Jay? Who's the drug addict, London? Jeremy, Jeremy London, London. as the classic Mr. Holmes. Uh, 
so how did all right so Kino has actually explained how he got Jeremy London before and Jeremy London I believe was in Dazed and Confused was he not I'm not familiar Anybody? with uh, even which character you're talking about so he's he the uh, teacher uh, he was in Mallrats I think Jason London was in Dazed and Confused so he didn't even get his own reference right there um, yeah Jeremy London is uh, one of the teachers who's kind of uh, like a fuck up he's you know he's drinking with the, the one kid at the end in the beginning he's mouthing off to the kids uh, buying time the guy with the Vince the Gilligan classroom. beard yes that's right yeah. he does have a very Vince Gilligan look in this yeah movie. So he's uh, an yeah, actual yeah, he was he was pretty actor. good, I guess. I wouldn't say that. Uh, compared would, to the rest of the movie, the face. he was. I mean, so so what was the story? He found it in that parking lot where he shot him. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was face down in the parking lot. They picked him up and gave him a job. No, uh, I don't know. I, I think he might have been teaching at Kino's College, or he might have known some. I I have no idea. Um, but the fact he did get a name. For his first movie, I think is kind of interesting. Maybe it speaks more to Jeremy London's career than Kino's, though. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think he's going to be advertising this one on his IMDb? I mean, honestly, I'm taking a look at his IMDb right now, and there's worse. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, good. I mean, apparently, Mumkey doesn't think that there could be worse. What is your guys' rating of this movie, then? Well, I, I did want to touch on your review, Mumkey, because... Yeah, should we read that for the audience? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I th yes, absolutely, it should be read. If, okay. Who wants to take the duty of that? I, I can handle it. Uh, it. It is currently, as far as I can tell, the most liked review of this film on Letterboxd. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> which is brutal. I just posted it yesterday, I think, two days ago. Uh, I gave it one star out of five, and I said my apologies to Ralph Seppe, Angry Video Game Nerd, Red Letter Media, and even Doug Walker. I guess this shit is harder than I thought. So yeah, so is it really that brutal? I feel like that's savage. fair. That, that's not that brutal. What, what shit? Like, do they? I mean, they review better movies than this. I mean, uh, that can't be hard, right? I feel like all of them have made a better film than this. Oh, that's what you mean. Really? Yeah. I don't I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, I would say yeah. that there's probably more moments of enjoyment in something like Space Cop than any of those, right? But is it uh, cohesive as a movie? No. The Angry Video Game Nerd movie is more Ugh. functional as a movie, but I think it's also uh, much more of a slog to get through. Lowrise, I cannot uh, think of one solitary characteristic of the Wasted Hours that is superior in any way to any of these other films you're listing. And what what does Wasted Hours do better than Space Cop? Uh, gets a good film look. Good tech film texture. <laughs> I don't even agree with that. Um, At one point, like, like the, the teacher in the beginning, they didn't have a teacher's desk, so she's using like a TV dinner tray table <laughs> as her desk. This is what looks good. It looks like a film to you. It's commentary on school budgets, all right. <laughs> it's commentary on we didn't want to move a desk for this scene. <laughs> well, I mean, no, I, this, I, I think this, with with this, wasted hours, it, it it's eighty six minutes or something like that, you know. And it's uh, you have to maybe you have to keep in mind that uh, you know a twenty four year old made this. Ralph Seppe, you know, Lover, I think looks significantly cheaper than this movie. And he does exactly the same thing in terms of just what what the function of it is, because he's around the same age, it's around the same length. But Lover felt like a longer movie to me than Wasted Hours. There's at least much more uh, of a dynamic structure to this, even if it's like very generic and the characters are very uh, two dimensional. Are you talking visuals or or writing here? Uh, neither, really. I don't know. I think it's just a total package. Hans, can you so, back me so up here? Am I crazy only, here? Only either. I don't understand. No. no uh, I think uh, the the parts that I enjoyed were not on purpose. Uh, there, there's a couple of things that kind of made me chuckle a little bit, but just because of how ridiculous it was, I don't think that this is what it was intended. Uh, like the whole uh, punk rock band thing where the girl is like, who cares? It's not like any of these matters. And then the guy reacts with like, 
this isn't time for nihilism bullshit like it's very (laughs) non-teenager speak Mm. but at the same time it's like what you would think the punks at the school would would talk to each other like uh that kind of stuff i enjoyed but again i don't think any of that was on purpose i think it was just you know how he ended up coming out God, she was so obnoxious. It's like, hey, here's the thing I care about. And she's like, who cares about that? Ridiculous. <laughs> These things all meaningless. Like, you just, he, he clearly cared about it. What the hell? You, you're tearing out his heart. <laughs> well, every female character in the film is like a stuck up, horrible, prude bitch, or he just doesn't have a personality. So at least yeah, she had something. I guess so. Wait. <laughs> I mean, that was not personality, no, yeah. The other female character is, uh, my boyfriend is trying to break up with me, but I, I'm too stupid to tell. And then when he actually is upfront about it, I scream and shout hysterically saying, no, you can't break up with me. And then he decides to stay with me anyway. Uh, that's the other woman in the movie. I mean, I feel like that was a satisfying arc, at least. Uh... Uh-huh. Oh. Uh huh. You have the you have the little Scooby Doo uh, like scene where he's talking to the bouncer and and then he's oh god yeah you know mentions the hypnotism or whatever it is that, that was the most he just, painful part of the movie. He, he's, <laughs> he slightly turns to the guy and then they just sneak past him. But after sneaking past him, they just get what five steps away from him, so they're still close enough where if he just told, turns around he'll be able to see them and then he sees them yeah. and takes them out. Uh, the intro uh, and, and outro they, of the bar does not make any sense that the if he looks over his shoulder from outside he can see them inside the bar but then inside like it's completely dark you know like they're it, at the bar in there's, there's no way he could see them as the bouncer from outside I think the geography of the way that they shot it or maybe they just filmed it in two different places but it really did not work. Well, I well just... they walk past that curtain too, right? Yeah, there's no you, way that they dude walk saw past him. A... <laughs> they walk past a curtain, they get a drink, and then they get a <laughs> seat, and then somehow the bouncer just turns around and they're there. Well, I just also a... when 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 they get kicked out, uh, the girl has a my favorite line in the movie, where she says, "We can vote, smoke, and join the fucking military, but we can't get into this bar." That was great. Also, the entire premise that is that like, they're letting 18 year olds perform at the bar. Like, yeah. you're not letting teenagers in, but they can perform? What's up with this shit? Is that a thing? I mean, they're not going to get served alcohol while they perform, so that should be fine. Yep, there are plenty of bars that you can get into, but you just can't order a drink. If you're going to have literal high schoolers performing as the band, why not let their friends in and, like, they can order fucking soda? And can you guys explain something to me that I think was lost in translation when the bouncer, bouncer says, don't say snitch, you're a little too Asian for that? What is that trans- mean? Racist joke. That was a hilarious, edgy joke. <laughs> that, that was no translation. How could that have been lost? Well, he doesn't understand it because he's not a racist like you, Florian. I mean, I, I <laughs> so don't explain it to him. It explain how Asians are snitchy, Florian, since it makes so much sense to you. No, it doesn't make sense. Oh. I'm just saying, like, there's no way that it could make sense. Well, I guess we'll I leave this be- explanation to Lorez. <laughs> I think Haas was actually asking for the Chinese translation there. <laughs> yeah, right, so that I can understand it, yeah. <laughs> well, you must know it then if you think there's an explanation, Mumpke. People think of Asians as being sneakier and untrustworthy, so I think that's where the snitch line is coming from. Who are, who are these people, uh, Mumpke, that you speak Well, of? if you ever watch this program called Survivor, if you see a little Asian lady, she's not making it to merge. But that doesn't make any sense. Like, if they are sneaky, then they would hate, like, snitches, so that would make sense. <laughs> uh, I, let's call Kino and have him dish it out then, right now. Let's figure like this only, one out. The, the only way you could say that you're too Asian to call someone a snitch is as if if Asians are known for being snitches. Like, are they? Well, I don't think so. Do you think I, that the bouncer who has uh, put holes in his brain like Swiss cheese with the constant LSD <laughs> might not understand his own joke? <laughs> I mean, no, I think uh, that was written by by Isaac, okay? I think the it's binding the... of Isaac. Who's Isaac? <laughs> it's the guy who got bound in Florian's game. <laughs> Peter. No, I, I think he wrote, wrote this joke, and he, and there's no way he, he wrote it nonsensical because it's the weed guy, okay? 
Well, I actually I interviewed I the bouncer, the actor who played the bouncer, and he was very uncomfortable with the line, and he did not want to say it on camera, but Kino <laughs> forced him to do it because he said it was crucial to the film. Yeah, makes sense. The Asian characters just need to be shit on a little bit more while we cannot hear a single thing that they say because Kino did not give them a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes but i i just gotta say that i i disagree with you guys saying that the the scene where they sneak past the the bouncer was bad okay i i thought it was it was a stupid concept but then the fact that they had this this sincere elongated conversation about about this these these drugs and shit i i, f I felt that really okay i felt that they're, they're talking, and this bouncer is so fucking stupid. He's probably an anti-vaxxer or something, and he's he's like mm. genuinely <laughs> believing that, <laughs> no. genuinely believing that these 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 mushrooms and this hypnosis is gonna gonna change your life. And I <laughs> I, I just feel hey, don't sorry knock until you guy. try it, Florian. For fuck's sake. Yeah, I bet. I bet you're gonna gonna go into a, an eight hour uh, an eight minute spiel about it I sure. bet if you dropped one shroom you'd have so many great video game ideas flowing through your brain and if you wrote oh them down God. man you, the next decade you'd have work everyone keeps telling me this I, I have too many ideas okay like finishing them is the hard part you oh, got a drug for fair. that yeah it's called it, money you hire some fucking Korean kids to make the game for you <laughs> Well, I mean, I am spending money, so I guess I'm trying to do that too, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I like the scene. Okay, it's it's really weird though that they in the end really bond. I guess because like, how how can you bond with this maniac who just <laughs> is just really into all these mushrooms? Oh well. <laughs> Florian, what rating would you give the movie? I think I'd I'd actually go for five out of ten. You know, probably. So two point five on Letterboxd. Sure. But is that is, or is that a five out of ten for what this actually is, which is like a Kino student film, or is that for feature films as as a whole? Uh, I guess that's a hard choice. I mean, yeah, no, it's it's for for all movies. Okay, I've seen worse shit than this. Hmm. Like like we've seen fucking disaster movie. We've seen. Hmm, wait, what was that other one I really hated? Superhero movie was bad, but there was another one. Ah, ah, oh, god, the fucking Dominion. The fucking, no, no, Dominion was a masterpiece. No, the <laughs> the Teen, Teen Titans, Titans watched watch Space movie. Jam. <laughs> this, that was probably you like the worst that? shit ever. Yeah, yeah. the the audience oh, voted geez, for us to watch Christ. that as a film. Yeah, they hate what us. What is it? It's, it's you don't well. Oh. Go ahead, Lorez. Uh, I want to hear you describe it. <laughs> uh, so w around the time that they did the Space Jam sequel, they decided to do uh, well. We got to do some tie-ins, and obviously they were doing these Teen Titans movies. There was Teen Titans Go to the Movies. I think that was a theatrical release. Yeah. And then they decided to follow it up with this uh, Teen Titans meet Space Jam film that I just recently saw on HBO Max. It was uploaded to HBO Max, and uh, I haven't investigated it. I honestly, uh, uh, it looks pretty repellent from from what I've seen of the few clips out there. Yeah, we gave it a full Is It Kino review, and it's truly as bad as it looks. Don't even bother. I mean, like, you, you wouldn't even believe that it exists. It, it is literally just them doing a react video of, of them watching the movie. <laughs> like, how, how the fuck did they think that that was a good use of of their IPs. It's like, oh yeah, why don't we just have these characters watch it and then nothing fucking happens. <laughs> like in, in, in they go to the movies, at least there's like an actual story that happens pretty soon after they've seen some movies, you know? But in this one, it's it's literally just them watching the, the movie. <sighs> are they watching the original or are they watching the LeBron the James sequel? The original, but they cut out any scene that just has um, black human characters talking like they will fast forward to scenes that have the cartoon characters damn yeah i guess it's racist too great well, it, um, they understand so what the kids want to see the movie that's what i i, I argued yeah. that it was in a way a superior space jam experience because they do cut out the fluff i mean they add extra fluff so no i don't think it's better. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just depends on if you want to watch cartoons or fake uh, Michael Jordan children. I mean, I definitely... No, I, I... 
you, you gotta stop talking shit about Space Jams. It it's amazing hmm. how how they have these <laughs> cartoons interfacing with these live action people. Okay, it yeah. was a I, I love Space Jam, man. I don't know why you're bitching at me about it, but Hans, I want to hear. Do you have well, any final thoughts on Wasted Hours? We need to wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I I hate that. Uh, well, you did send me a bit bit to link, uh, but before that, I think we were supposed to talk about this movie. I don't know, like six months ago. Yeah. Because I found I found a, a file on my computer that is 15 gigabytes of uh, beautiful uh, movie that uh, that that's. I think that that soured my experience more than than <laughs> knowing who did it. Uh, because again, I didn't know who Isaac Mahithi was. <laughs> but then I saw that I had a 15 gigabyte file on my computer. I was like, what the hell is this? Why is it so? And then there's no no reason for it other than well, Hans, <laughs> hold on. Would you have liked the movie more if it ended with directed by? The Kino Corn. <laughs> you said that in big font. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, that would have put it into perspective. I think I would have been maybe a little bit nicer just because, you know, he's our, our, our friend. <laughs> well, but think about it this way. We, we all got to watch it for free. Imagine you, you spent $10 <laughs> and then had to download a 15 gigabyte video file to enjoy the film. Uh, in yeah, that case, I, I would I, give it even I, lower than one star, but thankfully I got to see it for free. I mean, yeah, I get. Uh, I I hold it in highest regard, higher regard than Lover, just for that reason. Because for Lover, I did have to pay. Yep. And then, um, and then well, that was miserable. Uh, and and like Laura said, that one felt like it. Wait, you dragged can't do that. More, you're, you're you're making a biased review because the author literally gave us that free link. Every yeah. review is biased, Florian. <laughs> <laughs> so we were trying to avoid that. There's no objectivity <laughs> when reviewing wasted hours. I think it's you know, the first movie that I've ever had to pay in my whole, you know, whatever 150 <laughs> episodes I've done with. Because even the blockbusters that I do in movies is like, yeah, I'm just going to steal it. But you couldn't steal this. No, yeah, because nobody's no. old. <laughs> Neither lover, I guess. Yeah. Well, the, uh, you know, I don't think that this is the worst of the video game movies we've talked about, the four. The, the YouTuber uh, that movies. Have been covered. The YouTuber Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yes. The YouTuber movies. I think this is the second best. Because I do think that this is better than Lover, and I do think it's better than the angry video game the movie. I do think that Space Cop is far superior uh, to this, just because there's actual comedy in that that works, that makes uh, mon many ma other aspects of that movie forgivable. Um, as far as what the movie is, I have a very difficult time actually grading this, because if I were to grade it on like a feature film scale, it'd be like a two, it'd be like a three. Yeah. But it's narratively... It, it it's not like it it's not incohesive you know it it's uh it's something you know i think that kino has some promise to him if he was able to do this movie <laughs> at 24 that's what i'll say wow some promise is it the worst thing that kino's done uh no i don't think so i think <clears throat> i think uh it's much more egregious whenever he like tweets at a celebrity and is like trying to get a follow back as a reply guy. Like Dasha will post like a, a pack of cigarettes. And he's like, oh yeah, cigarettes are good. Yeah, like, come okay, she's, I get what you're doing here. She's, you're trying to strategize into getting a follow back or a reply. Okay. No, he, he I think that's much like, worse. thinks that the cigarettes should be in movies. Come on, he's not lying about that one. He's anti-weed pro tobacco, I believe. Yeah. I mean, oh, what an artist. He smokes He's a real artist, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we need to get a, a Hans and Kino Corner episode up next. This is. I, I think we got to get a Hans Kino boxing match. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After this, I think he's going to want to box me. And I, I, it's not really much of a contest. I think Kino would fucking kill me. So I might need to keep some distance after this comes out. Wow. Well, does he actually think that this is a good movie? Uh, well, I, I suspect no. He does. He, he I mean, didn't I... want to put his real name on it, for one. Um, and whenever you bring it up to him, he does say student film. In which case, I mean, nice defense, bro. But as a student film, I, I give it the grade <laughs> of D. So, you know, it's still not good. Well, you'd be a bad teacher then. <laughs> no, if, if... wrong. <laughs> no, a, a good teacher would give you an honest grade and tell you what to improve. 
Yeah, so you'd fail every single student. Good choice. If this is your final, then I'm not like, you know, if you are a teacher for a doctor and on their final, they kill the patient, would you feel safe sending them out into the world as a doctor? I don't know if I can, as a, a lover of art, I don't know if I could send them off into the world of filmmaking after this. Yeah, you would fail every student then. No, I've seen, like I said, every other YouTuber movie I thought was better. Well, do you, every one thing. of them. All no, of them. I, I think I might hate this more than any movie I've ever seen. <laughs> I really, truly loathe the film. Think about disaster movie, okay? Take that back right now. That had the joke where she was walking on broken glass and she was saying, ow, ow. That made me laugh. This movie, I got no <laughs> moment of joy. <laughs> what I think this no movie fails at is, is capturing any sort of spark of, of uh, you know, something interesting here where, you know, you can forgive just how dull or how generic the characters or the dialogue or the story is because, it, you know, there, there was humor, like authentic humor at one part or something that was just different from anyone else operating at this kind of uh, playing field. But he does, I, I think, successfully land the narrative structure. It's just hollow inside. So it kind of feels like a waste. If it was sloppier, you know, if it was a mess and there was something in there that made me smirk, I would have like a better experience with this movie. Um, but for what it is, I'm much more forgiving because I know it, it takes a lot of work to complete a feature film. Yeah. And he managed to do that at 24. But that's the nicest thing I can say about Wasted Hours. I, I honestly don't. I didn't hate it as much as Monkey did. I th I think it was just a, 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 a nothing. Like I didn't really get anything out of it. Uh, I didn't know that it was his um, stu like a student film or whatever. It feels a lot like that. It feels like uh, it has all the the issues that student films usually have, which is you know non professional actors or actors that don't feel like they have interacted with each other before. Uh, awkward framing and awkward setup of shots where sometimes you're just kind of wondering why he's doing uh, the, the framing and at other points is like why is he not doing something more creative than just mids and, and close-ups that that's I think what what made it drag a little bit more for me just because visually is just very TV movie from the 90s, uh, which is, I guess, kind of what he was going for. So if that's what he was going for, then he succeeded with me. Uh, I just, yeah, I just feel like there's too many characters for what actually happens. So then yeah, sure. I, I couldn't tell who the main character was. Was it the traumatized bully that's terrible at being a bully because he couldn't even bully that guy into giving him five bucks? <laughs> uh, and then when he gave him like a dollar fifty or whatever, he threw it behind the, the jukebox. So he was like, oh, well, now you can't get it, bully. So I guess you're just going to get frustrated. What a bully. You know, like that. that I, I, then you have the David Hogg character who also, I didn't know what he was trying to do other than pretended he likes to record things with his camera, which is a great character trait to have if you have anything to tag along with it. But he didn't really. Well, he uh, and then ever he likes to annoy people with his camera. I think it's more of his thing. So I think that's... Slightly well, that was Kino Corner's self-insert character, the, the <laughs> oh, metrosexual shit. boy with the camera. I mean, he does. Right, but I think he does like to troll people. I think so. That makes sense. And also, one of the biggest problems is that you, you know, you're also always told shoot or write what you know. And I feel like a lot of these personalities that are trying to come out of the screen, I, I don't know if he's ever met people that are those characters are, are because none of them he, felt he real too are you saying he didn't go to school i'm saying he probably didn't interact with the type of characters that he was writing just because none of them felt like a real character they, they all felt authentic. like this it, yeah it was someone trying to play that guy or that girl it's something you, you know? saw but, in a but, movie yeah, exactly. Or, yeah, exactly. Like, well, bullies are supposed to act like this. I've, I saw it in Clarissa Explains It All, so that's who my bully is going to be. You know, that type of thing. If, Florian, let me ask you this. Back to if we're going to grade this as a student project. One of the basic tenets of filmmaking is the dialogue should be audible. 
And like it, as an editor, I'm sure he went through this, scrubbed through the footage and, and went through the edit hundreds of times and painstakingly. <laughs> How do you go through it hundreds of times and either not notice or not care that there are so many lines of dialogue you just can't hear? I mean, it's just a failure. Shoot it? Just it dub so it over. Expense. You dub it over. No fucking way. Double That's double. how every movie ever made has yeah. been done. Really? Damn. Yeah, yeah, yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta yeah, do right. ADR. So, I, I think it was also really bad with the drummer uh, of the band, where he was just completely mm -hmm. off mic. And I was thinking to myself, watching that, exactly what you just said, Monkey, which is just... I get him back to do ADR or hire somebody else because he's not really saying anything of substance. It could have been really simple. And I think in the edit, well, you know, we were talking about crickets at the beginning of this. That's a, di I believe that's a different audio track. This isn't all one audio track. And he just put the levels up a little too high. But what you can do is if you're working on like the same project day in and day out, sometimes you will just wind up making mistakes like that and become blind to it and then you won't see it unless you like step away and come back to it so i i understand how he made these mistakes like i i get where he might have tripped up but obviously it doesn't excuse it audio is the most important thing when well, it comes if, to a film if it's just audio he he could have just redone it after with words when he uploaded it right so if if the, mm -hmm. the audio really is the worst part of it so i i guess i i guess you're right monkey i guess i should subtract one point from that okay so now it's it's four out of ten because the audio sucks and he released it so much later so he really should have fixed it but then again, I well, guess it's maybe going to remain should've... unfixed. And the fact that yeah. he charged some people ten dollars for an incomplete <laughs> film, like just, it actually makes me angry. Like if you're if you're <laughs> going to say it's a, a shitty student film and it sucks, either release it for free, which he eventually did do, or well, why are you charging money for it? Either you're proud of it and it's good, or why are you wasting my fucking money? Oh no, it's the the seam again. It's wasted hours, damn. Yeah. It's all wasted on purpose. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's the obvious review, right? Like, yeah, my hours sure were wasted with this piece of shit. Uh, I mean, it, it, I still think you're too harsh on it. I mean, like, they, I I enjoyed listening to these characters, even if they were like not not written like a normal movie. I think they're written more like like real people than like characters in a movie, which isn't good because it's not entertaining, but I, I like it, okay? I, I, I didn't hate it, you know? Uh, I would say watch the scene when they're all at the little ice cream shop, and if you think any of that dialogue is natural and humanistic, uh, you know, we need to pass the Turing test somehow. <laughs> I mean, like, do you remember like like pl things that happened when you were a student were they not the most cringe shit ever uh <laughs> i mean i but guess I, so. I think there's a difference the difference between you know cr acting cringe as a teenager and then seeing teenagers acting cringe in this movie doing very generic boring things how i well uh hmm I, mean, I think, if, if uh, I think the things them, that were more interesting were probably uh, the teenager behaviors from high school as opposed to what's enacted in this film. I would I mean, say the entire premise of the film is uh, unnecessary to begin with. He should have made a movie about something else. This is not a, a film's worth of interesting material to evaluate. The themes did not have me, you know, racking my brain all night in bed mm -hmm. thinking about the film and what it meant. Make a movie about something else. This sucks. Well, I, I definitely disagree with that part. A film about it's the last day of school. Okay, I've seen fucking uh, Timmy Turner special episode of Fairly Odd Parents many times. <laughs> it's not a unique premise. <laughs> well, if you've heard it before, then that means that the premise could be good in, in, in theory. I obviously say that the execution of it is bad because it wasn't written well, but... I could see a movie about this subject be good. I, I could see these characters be good if they were written well, and if they if they didn't have like really obvious jokes coming, where he said, "Oh, I bought the the brownies and and I bought the the weed." Like you should have <laughs> you should have bought the weed and made the brownies, you idiot. And then that comes up as a joke later. Yeah, I saw that coming. It was obvious. It was cringe. And the thing with the the guy breaking up with the girl, like it's. 
it's a joke that he's that cowardly at first, but then he keeps going and it doesn't become any better. And like that's bad writing there, but it's it's believable believable as characters, and it could have been good with good writing. Okay, I I, I believe that. But you could say that about there. anything, right? <laughs> yeah, if this was written good. well, it would be good. So the, the <laughs> if, plot line you know, of the if, guy if, who if, wants to break up with his girlfriend really this is should be like a movie long plot line, but it's ultimately just three minute long conversations. Like he, they have a one minute conversation to establish it. Then in the middle, like they tease him about it at the restaurant, and then at the end, he tries to break up with her, and she says no. So he, he takes three really short conversation scenes and pops them at different parts in the movie. Now I'm I have the impression that was the plot. Like that's a short film that he sprinkled throughout a bunch of nothing happening <laughs> but that's I mean, that's most they're, they're, of the characters right because they're all kind of divided in in little cliques of two or three people and none of them do anything interesting uh so then you know you have the band right and the whole arc with the the guy that ends up in a white t-shirt looking at his phone all sad uh and the bandmates left him so you have that little arc i guess just kind of a story that doesn't really go anywhere and that could have ended before the show even you know when they said they were going to break up but then you just drag that whole thing to show that he's butthurt and he set up this uh event and that they were going to make it big and only he believed that uh then you have the group with the bully right who's just i guess kind of going around a couple of the groups kind of interacted with them but the whole story was about how him and his brother are kind of losers and then he's mad at him but then he's not right and then <laughs> yeah. you have the group yeah. of three with the the kino insert the asian guy and the girl and uh they just kind of hang out so so it's just a lot of a gr a groups that kind of revolve uh, around each other but none of them really do anything that's worth following so then you're just like oh cool that happened no one learned anything, no one grew, <laughs> no one did anything that was like entertaining to watch. It was just people sitting around trying to say things at each other. Yeah. And I mean, uh Yeah, Florian, what was the character arc right. and motivation for the the kid with the camera? Like how did he change from beginning to end? <laughs> well, I don't I don't even remember him that much. Yeah, he's know? like the main character. <laughs> <laughs> See, so I think I think uh if uh, as someone that has never directed a full length, so I, I have big balls for me to e even say this. Like, how dare I even say this? But yeah, yeah, I, I always get I mad when people review games when they've not made a game. Like, how dare they? Fuck them, right? Right, exactly. How, how do, do they have the right? <laughs> yeah, try you. You come <laughs> you up with a it. bug that you can <laughs> inflate into a little ball so you can bounce around, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, but but what I mean is like. If you're if it's going to be your first or second uh attempt at making a movie maybe try of, of thinking of something that's more of a, a a basic story that you can follow uh instead of trying to create this uh, uh 10 characters that are all supposed to be interesting but then you can't figure out how to make them interesting so then at the end it's just nine ten characters that you know none of them are yeah, I mean, interesting to follow, right? That, so terrible. then it's like, oh, I just watched two hours of nothing, what? one and a half. Yeah. No, well, yeah, yeah, I think you, it was also a right. tall That's... order and a big mistake for him to try to do this kind of camaraderie uh, high mm -hmm. school movie while he was still of that age. I think you have to have some time separated between actually experiencing that and then reformulating all of those memories into something uh, later on into adulthood and revisiting that through writing. So I, I think he was doomed from the start uh, beyond, you know, just, just handling too many characters, uh, allocating too much money to honestly trivial things as far as this project goes. Uh, well, let me pose this question real quick. Do you think, based off of Kino's recent work, Right, because he shoots all of his YouTube videos on 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter film, right? He's been doing little narrative pieces through his YouTube channel. Do you think if he were to revisit this now and say, I'm gonna remake Wasted Hours now that I'm 28 or 20, however old he is, do you think it would come out good? I would I mean, strongly I advise him so. against that project. 
I, I would tell him to allocate his time and efforts and imagination into any other project. I think wasted hours is a lost cause. Do you guys agree with that? Do you really think that this that the premise is so bad that it should be given up on, like Mumkey does? I don't. I don't think that the premise is necessarily bad. I think it's hackneyed because we've seen it done better yeah, by yeah, Richard Linklater sure. and and several others uh, over the past couple of decades. There, there was nothing. I mean, that's yeah. really the big problem. Well, well yeah, but that, but like I, I agree well, yeah. that the execution is terrible. We, we, I mean, we all agree on that. <laughs> like, but the premise, I think, could have worked. Right. I think I just had a time in my life where it's very hard to empathize with the feeling that the characters are going through because ultimately, do any of us actually think back to the problems you had at age 18? Like, oh, I can't sneak into this bar. Like, those are the problems that the characters are dealing with. I have no empathy for it. I can't relate to it on any level, and I don't care because the problems presented in the movie, like in real life, are meaningless. Nobody cares that you can't go into this bar. Well, I mean, that's pretty cold-hearted of you. <laughs> well, la-dee-da, look at me, cold-hearted McGee over here. <laughs> I mean, like, do you realize that, that to kids, this is like all they know, and this is their future now, they gotta decide if they go to college, or if they, if they party and do drugs, and yeah, they, they really want to be adults, but they're not allowed to go into bars, and I really hate the fact that that bars are such a, a pivotal thing that this is even like a, a thing, but it is, and you know, they they have real struggles there. I, I don't know how you could possibly not relate um, to that. I guess if you're 17 years old, go check out this film, Raves, Florian <laughs> Himsel, but it, as soon as you turn 21, all of these problems are like a forgotten memory. What, do you not watch other movies that are about this period in your Literally, life? Literally, no. At, I, I've not watched media about this type of thing in a long, long time. The closest I can think of is like Euphoria, and th even they do it better than this. I mean, yeah, like anyone would do it better, I guess. Well, <laughs> honestly, I, I, I really agree. What this movie needed it. Th that's what this new movie needed is a hardcore fucking scene. Yeah, I, I want <laughs> Zendaya I, I like snorting heroin off of a, a transgender person's cock and then having lesbian sex with them. Wow. I think Kino should sell this to Daily Wire. You know, <laughs> they end with the Communist Manifesto book burning. It's very uh, traditional right. values. That is perfect. Yeah. I think it could work. <laughs> well, well uh, have I, I have to. It, hate that. I have to hope and assume Kino did not listen to this podcast. Um, but I think we're going to wrap <laughs> this one up. Uh, unless anybody has any real last thoughts, uh, do you guys want to plug anything, Florian? You got a video coming out. Well, I got a video coming out about a Scooby-Doo Zombie Island. So oh, shit. You, you, You're going to shit all over it? Don't wanna, uh, a little bit, you know, but you, you definitely don't want to miss it. I, I had some more insights on it, and I, I think it really came together to, to make a, a good video. So check out anti-reviews for that one. <laughs> Lores, did you get the chance to watch Florian's video on the whale where he talks about the fat guy Olympics? No, I haven't. But you know what? Maybe I will. Ch I'll check that out. And uh, I remember liking Scooby Doo on Zombie Island when I was a kid. So yeah, I think it's uh, one I'll of the have good to ones. See this video as well. I mean, it was it was much better than what were the sequels? There was like a Martian sequel. There was one with Alien uh, Invaders, uh, John Cena, was, uh, Jose Canseco, wow. or somebody. Yeah, it was all terrible. <laughs> all terrible. After so that. Well, I don't know. WWE to... one. Or... Oh right, John Cena was in it. Yeah. yeah. Vince McMahon before his cancelled. You know what I like? I like the him. Harlem Globetrotters. That's what I like. I like when he met uh, the Harlem Globetrotters, Sonny and Cher. Batman. Batman and Robin, Joker, Penguin. Yeah, that was the classic era when Hans was a child <laughs> watching yes. those on. I love that Harlem Globetrotters cartoon where one of them would turn into a ball. That was his superpower. <laughs> the cartoon was awesome. And yeah, they also helped on Futurama. They're brilliant yeah. scientists from a basketball-shaped planet. That's great. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I'm promoting movies, a podcast about the active cinema. Go listen to that for more of Hans and myself. And Hans, you have that big solo project coming out soon, right? No, what? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I thought you had like oh, a, I see a rap you're album. From the, yeah, you're from the from the school of throwing things for me to improvise uh, <laughs> that has never worked with Lores in every episode. I'm a big fan of your show, okay? Like, <laughs> every time it I'm pops like, yeah, up on YouTube, I click on it. 
Yeah, let me let me improv something that has never worked in 300 <laughs> episodes that we've done. You're telling me no, you I'll, don't have any I'll improv always... in the movie coming out? Oh well, there no, there's plenty. But here's the thing about that is that's after about like 12 takes of Hans fucking up the line, <laughs> and then I'm just like, all right, just make something, just say whatever the hell you want. Let's get the fuck out. Just of here. talk on. about wacky races. And then I just go off for like five minutes. That, no, that got cut. That's not in the movie. Oh, so. well, spoiler alert. Yeah. But you, you cut you the know, wacky yeah. racist discussion scene from the movie? Well, here's what it was. It was Hans waiting for my character to come back to the car. Because Hans is my driver in the movie. He drives. And uh, <laughs> Hans was just sitting behind the wheel singing the theme song to Wacky Races. And uh, we couldn't do that anyway. We couldn't get the rights to the theme song for Wacky Races. What, to sing it? Even the That's Hans the cover song. isn't qualified? I'm afraid not. I don't think so. That's all Hanna-Barbera, Warner Brothers, Turner. It's expensive. Very expensive license. I mean, license. according to Velma, they'll let anybody do anything with their properties. So I would have tried it. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, Velma would never mislead you. Well, everybody, go subscribe to the Movies Podcast. If you like the, the banter between Florian and I, like this is the superior version of Hans and Lorez. So I don't know why you're listening to this and not that. <laughs> Hans, I think you need to really start adding more German to your accent. It's a little too muddled between Costa Rica and the UK and everywhere else. That's really the thing that's been missing. Yeah. I'll start. <laughs> nine, nine, nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Schnitzel. <laughs> Schnitzel. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye.